In the final video of this lesson, I want to transition to talking about the reactivity of aromatic compounds, focusing first on one of the simplest reaction types, acid-base reactions or proton transfer. There are three major factors that affect the acidity or basicity of aromatic heterocycles that we're going to look at in this video. The first is most closely related to aromatic versus non-aromatic heterocycles and has to do with the hybridization of the atom housing the lone pair that, for example, is donated when the heterocycle acts as a base. The second is really an effect that we've seen before in detail in the context of benzene and has to do with substituent effects. And these are the inductive effects and resonance effects caused by substituents attached to the, in this case, heteroaromatic ring. And finally, resonance delocalization can play a role in the acidity or basicity of heterocycles. And this is especially important when comparing rings with multiple heteroatoms, since oftentimes the presence of additional heteroatoms can lead to additional resonance structures and stabilization of, for example, a positively charged conjugate acid of a neutral basic heterocycle. First, let's consider the role of hybridization in the acidity or basicity of heterocycles. And here we're going to take a look at pyridine compared to piperidine, which is a hydrogenated compound related to pyridine. When pyridine is fully hydrogenated, the result is piperidine. The pKa values on the left-hand side here are showing us that the conjugate acid of pyridine is significantly more acidic than the conjugate acid of piperidine. And I actually want to turn that around and use the conjugate seesaw to reason about the basicity of the conjugate bases based on this pKa data. Since protonated pyridine is more acidic than protonated piperidine, that means neutral pyridine, the conjugate base, is less basic than piperidine is. Why is pyridine less basic than piperidine? Well, in both of these molecules, the lone pair that really acts as a base is part of the sigma system. The nitrogen in pyridine is an N2 nitrogen, and that means that the lone pair on this atom is housed in an sp2 hybrid. In piperidine, the nitrogen is part of a plain vanilla amine. This molecule has no resonance structures, no conjugation, nothing like that, and so the nitrogen atom here is sp3 hybridized, just like a plain vanilla amine. Which lone pair is more stable? The one housed in an sp2 hybrid, or the one housed in an sp3 hybrid? Well, let's roll the clock back to our stability factor based on hybridization. sp hybrid orbitals are lower in energy than sp2 hybrid orbitals, which are lower in energy than sp3 hybrid orbitals. This means that a pair of electrons housed in an sp2 hybrid such as the pair of electrons on nitrogen in pyridine, will be lower in energy and consequently more stable than a pair of electrons housed in an sp3 hybrid, such as the pair of electrons on nitrogen in piperidine. Piperidine's lone pair is less stable, meaning that that nitrogen is more reactive as a base, more basic. And so we see then how we can trace back the basicity difference to a difference in hybridization of the nitrogen atoms and more specifically of the orbitals housing the lone pairs on these nitrogen atoms. Substituents attached to aromatic heterocycles actually have fairly intuitive effects on acidity or basicity. Think back to the video where we introduced the Hammett constant. The idea there was that a substituent attached to a benzene ring that's part of a benzoic acid influences the acidity of the carboxylic acid group, and the exact same effect can happen here with, for example, protonated pyridines like this. We can look at the effect of different R groups located at different positions around the pyridinium ring, now that this is protonated, we refer to it as a pyridinium, and trace those effects back to the electron donating or withdrawing nature of the R group. And the way we do this empirically and quantitatively is to think about the pKa for this process for different substituents R. When R is a strong electron donating substituent, something like the dimethyl amino group, Notice that the pKa of the pyridinium ion is very high. It's a relatively weak acid. This means that the conjugate base, the substituted pyridine on the product side, is a stronger base than those substituted pyridines that are further down on this table. As the electron donating power of the substituent decreases, and I haven't listed them here, but you could compare to Hammett constants to get a sense of the relative strengths of these electron donating groups we see the pKa going down and the pyridinium ion becoming more acidic. 
This means that the conjugate base, the substituted pyridine, is less basic. And that makes intuitive sense because for these weaker electron donating groups, the ring is less electron rich, if you like, or more electron poor, meaning that the nitrogen will be a weaker base in general. Hydrogen is the dividing line between electron donating groups and electron withdrawing groups in this table. For the strongest electron withdrawing substituents, such as the nitro group in the 3 position or even two chlorines at the 2 and 6 positions, we find that the pyridinium ion is extremely acidic, meaning that the conjugate base, the substituted pyridine, is an extremely weak base. As the electron withdrawing strength of the substituent goes down, we find that the pyridinium ion becomes somewhat more stable, its acidity decreases, and the basicity of the conjugate base, the substituted pyridine, tends to increase. The big idea here in general is that when the substituent is an electron donating group, donating electron density to the ring, that makes, makes the nitrogen atom more basic. It's more willing to donate its lone pair to a proton. But when the substituent is an electron withdrawing group, pulling electron density away from the aromatic ring, the nitrogen is less willing to donate its lone pair to a proton, making it less basic. In a sense, the ring is already partially positively charged, and so the nitrogen is unwilling to donate its lone pair to put a positive formal charge on nitrogen. In many aromatic heterocycles, the azoles are particularly famous for this, the presence of multiple heteroatoms leads to multiple resonance structures in which, for example, positive charge can be shared over the multiple heteroatoms. This tends to stabilize charged intermediates due to resonance delocalization. And these two examples illustrate this effect nicely. Consider pyridine versus imidazole. The pKa's indicate that protonated pyridine is significantly more acidic, much lower pKa, than protonated imidazole. Why is this? Well, first, let's consider resonance structures of this imidazoleum ion, the conjugate acid of imidazole. This molecule has a resonance structure that shows that the positive charge is shared, in fact, equally by both nitrogens, since the alternative resonance form is equivalent structurally to the molecule we started with. And so the two nitrogens are sharing the positive charge equally in the imidazoleum ion. Both of these resonance forms satisfy the octet rule. That's going to be important in a second. And so there's considerable stabilization of this molecule due to resonance delocalization. Looking now at the pyridinium ion, we certainly can identify resonance structures of the pyridinium ion that illustrate the delocalization of charge over atoms within the ring. For example, I can push the Cn pi bond electrons toward nitrogen to generate a resonance structure that places positive charge on carbon. And in fact, I could keep doing this to show how the positive charge is shared by the ortho and para positions with respect to the pyridine nitrogen within this structure. However, all of those feature positive charge on carbons, which necessarily violates the octet rule. And so these resonance forms are less important to the structure of the pyridinium ion than these resonance structures for the imidazoleum are to its true structure. Ultimately, what we can say is that there is stronger charge delocalization in the imidazoleum ion than there is in the pyridinium ion, despite the presence of these extra resonance structures, because they violate the octet rule. They're not actually that important to the structure of the pyridinium ion. Because the imidazoleum ion is more stable then, due to this resonance delocalization effect, the molecule itself is less acidic. And on the conjugate side, imidazole, the neutral conjugate base, is a stronger base than pyridine.